This video contains strong language not suitable for all viewers. Viewer discretion is advised. So, hi everybody, and welcome to 5% Chance of Disaster. This week there's a 5% Chance of Sadness somewhere. Um, as y'all have been uh, brought to brought to the mayor's estate, uh, and he had a few a few choice things to say to you. Um, as you as you came in, uh, you were escorted by um, one of by someone who looks like they were able to step through shadows, um, and two of you were brought by Gerard who was able to step through shadows, albeit uncomfortably, and did not seem to enjoy it. Uh, so you you were brought, basically snuck into the mayor's estates, avoiding several guard patrols, um, and brought to the council chamber, where there was just the mayor sitting in his chair with a pile of parchment in front of him, and a, a broken wine bottle, and a half-empty wine glass uh, in front of him. And I believe the last line where we left off was, you have a lot of explaining to do. So, we'll just pick it up right from there. All right. <clears throat> I think I was standing in front of him getting ready to... Uh... To debrief. I yeah, so, I yeah. Said, yeah, debrief. So... Uh, yeah, he said, yeah, you have a lot of explaining to do. So, uh, mission debrief. Original plan to entice into open and capture target. Mixed success. Enemy engaged with heavier arms and sooner than anticipated. Result, public disorder. Unfortunate side effect. Destruction of city property. Please speak with command personnel to discuss damages. Estimated civilian casualties. Zero. Square was cleared of all civilians by crowd displacement tactics initiated by this squad, as well as mixed help from armament used by enemy. Commotion in Square alerted the guards to hostilities. It was decided that entanglement with the guards would only weaken our ability to locate intended target. With all available information at hand, this unit de designated mission priority. An interaction with local peacekeepers would only set us back. Available time to explain situa situation inadequate. This unit employed tactics that will allow the squad to continue movement without suspicion or setbacks. Unfortunate side effects. Possible loss of peacekeeper life. Estimated guard casualties. One. Unit apologizes. <coughs> I do understand organic squeamishness about warfare losses. This unit will do better in the future to avoid unnecessary losses. Later. Squad flanked and took by surprise. Enemy squad with assumed target. One. Red. Location, sewer door, Durgham 4 entrance, status, sealed. Clarify, assumption. Final status, apprehension of anomaly, one, red, unavailable for study. Specimen will be brought to quarantine site before re-exposure to material plan. Robbie, I, how, how do you know all of these words? <laughs> And how do you remember everything in such detail? It is our job to report when we are done. You see the mayor, Holt, like, he kind of leads forward in his chair, kind of rubs his eye, looks at Robbie, and just goes... <sighs> so... Was the owl bear <laughs> the plan? It was not the initial plan. As I said during my debrief, we did right. not wish to engage. Right, right, okay. Well, I. I do apologize for any loss of peacekeeper life. No, no, you're, f you're fine. Everyone made it out more or less all right a few pairs of 
A few pairs of pants had to be changed, but nothing. Nothing extraordinary. <laughs> Perhaps they should take a bath. So I do recommend a bath. So do you know what happened to Ergen? You mentioned he was going to go investigate a warehouse. It was it was the other possible place we were going to spring the trap. Um, we went to the, the square to try to lure him out. He went to the warehouse. I tried to message him after we had fended off the assassins, and I heard an explosion, and then I never got a reply. As far as I we know, right now, one of the major nobles' houses just spontaneously exploded. The property of one, and he holds up a piece of parchment, is Duke Anderson. Council member, yada yada, no claims, no, no connection to any crime syndicate or anything, but he has, uh, he has several sub basements now. And I received this, and he gestures at all the parchment in front of him. And this shows up on my bed when the explosion woke me up. Do you know what this is? And he holds up what looks like a, a large envelope. Uh, that and there's looks some... like an envelope. Did you read it? Is it a letter? Several. And he flips it over to where the top flap comes down. He goes, this means that whoever wrote these letters is no longer living. And all of these are from Ergen. Interestingly enough, there's one for each of you. What did they say about me? Don't know. It's not my place to open them. You, you didn't? Mm. I opened and he, he points to a stack. He's like, these, these are for you. And these, and he's gesturing, and there's probably a dozen letters of part on various types and sizes and ages of parchment scattered around. He goes, these apparently were all for me. So. So what did the letters say to you? <laughs> this... Uh, Give me, if you want to know, give me a persuasion check. Natural one. <laughs> That's how we're going today, boys. He, uh, he, abs he just kind of, he throws a glare up at you and he goes, <clears throat> I'm going to pretend you didn't just ask me that. Well, I, I didn't suspect they would be so private my apologies i'm sorry that my best friend is dead and you want to know what his personal letters were to me if i may sir he takes it. death death can be reversed i am an example i have friends that are examples. What? And th when you say that, there's you see some of that anger get turned. The anger from him talking to Lamy turns and goes to you. And his his eyes meet yours, and that anger just flares for a second, and then just 
He goes, you, th- you think I haven't tried that already? You think I didn't go straight to Atronix's room, kick down his door, and ask him to bring him back? To be fair, the dick does not have as much power as you assume. <laughs> Secondly, <laughs> you did not try to go to another plane. I don't think he would have wanted that. If he's on another plane, that's a much more difficult way to get him back. And I'm, from what he's written, I'm inclined to agree with Miss Thalia. That doesn't mean I won't look for him. But that's that's a problem for after my city is done burning and blowing up and whatever the hell else this evening's going to have thrown at me. And he stands up wobbling. It's not he stands up kind of shakily, and once he starts walking, you realize that he's got a lot of wobble. Um, and he picks up the sheaf of envelopes and starts walking around the table and not but like he very kind of reverently places these envelopes in front of each of you. And if y'all look in your personal discord messages, uh, you shall all be receiving contents of these letters. Is, I think that's everybody and uh, Deeps and Rachel, you can open the ones that I sent you because yours are a little too big. Yeah. <laughs> and so as you all crack into these, he uh, goes back to his chair and sits down. Sorry, I'm reading. Mm-hmm. <laughs> no, everybody's reading. Feel f- you you may if you want to share this information publicly, you can. If you want to keep it private, you can do that as well. I'm going to refold my letter and put it away. Brandon's here. Brandon is here. Uh, so a quick heads up for you, Brandon. I think I sent you yours. Um, everyone has received um, a letter from 
according to the mayor from Ergen, that he wrote that could only and was put basically in an in an envelope that could only be open after he was dead. Uh, so everyone here has received a copy. Um, as you all you all finish, uh, Lithar reads his note, and Lithar. Uh, it's it's strange because he when he opens his um there's a thunk and some kind of so an object falls out of the letter that he has and it, it looks like a, a large walnut uh that's a little too big to fit your entire hand around and he reads his letter picks up his walnut and goes I'll be right back and turns and walks towards uh, he does a quick look around and starts walking back towards the door the the servant's door you came through and the the shadow steps forward and goes and just like they have a very quiet conversation in Elvish um, and then Ergen or not Ergen uh, <laughs> definitely not Ergen uh, the shadow kind of gestures into a um, a darkened corner of the room and the two of them and Cora pass through that shadow and disappear. The mayor is staring down into his now empty wine glass. Because Ergen knew literally everything that was going on. So you're you're right, Mori, he knew. <laughs> He knew a lot about a lot of things. Which makes it even fucking stupider that he went and got himself blown up like that and he takes, he like throws the wine glass and smashes it against the, the wall of the room and just sits back in his chair just his head in his hands and it's just very S deep breaths I uh hold out a beer for him to notice uh, he hasn't noticed you've got the beer out yet um but what were you saying Rachel does, does Lady Cosmo Gods, I forgot about her. I can... I'll message her. Do you still have the Sending Stone? No, if I... She has to know. If he's planned all of this for all of you. He has to have done that for her. He's known her longer than anybody. And as he says that, he picks his head up and sees the beer and kind of throws a quick look at Robbie and reaches and takes the beer. Uh, and just does he drinks it, but it's definitely like it's more of a reflex action than he's thinking about it. everybody had the chance to finish their reading mostly looking at josh because josh I, is I've, I've finished my reading i'm just okay. contemplating okay uh brandon did you get the chance to read yours okay 
So, I mean, after drinking probably about half his beer, sets the tankard down. Goes, let's let's circle back to where we started. So you found, so you all were responsible for the damage to the city square. That's that's fine. We can spin that to be whoever blew up the mayor's estate. What happened at the door? You you have it in custody in in quarantine. What is? Do you have the motherfucker who did this? Ranking designation invalid. Please seek a superior for clearance. <laughs> the the thing is an arm in the bag. He's as a far as we know. It sounds it's, strange, but it's an arm. That's what I thought. So all the all the people down there had mechanical pieces. The one had mechanical legs, the one had a mechanical eye, the one had a mechanical heart. And when Robbie took down Red, who is the big guy, he somehow jumped his consciousness around these different parts. And we ripped off an arm that he was in, and Robbie shoved it in the bag. Robbie, is that correct? Ripped off the arm, shut it down. Wait, are you asking in character or out of character? In character, yes. That is that is the mayor asking. In Robbie. character. Right. Rank and designation inadequate. Please see a superior. I'm going to take that as a yes, because he didn't tell me it wasn't. And so far, hopefully, none of you have lied to me in the past. Because at this point, the person I would ask to find out if you lied to me is... Anyway. <sighs> Fuck. And he reaches into a pocket and pulls out a coin purse, pulls out five gold and puts it on the table next to his letters. Yes. Fine. Fine. Great. You did your job. You did your thing. Do you need anything? Do what? I wanted you here f to know if you were at all involved in any of the nonsense that I've heard about today. It appears what, you were. what did you hear about? There's the good bits. Um, all of all of it. Past mm. the explosion, it's been a little, you know, busy. Oh. Fuck the explosion. All right, what time is it? It's, I guess you'd call it early now, but I would like to go look at this explosion. I believe my cells are running close to empty. I will require a recharge period. You don't have to come with me. I could go look alone. Alami, I'm waiting for the report back from Atronix and Bartholomew. Because they are on site currently working through what exactly happened. I'm gonna elbow Lami and be like, Bartholomew's mad at you, remember? Why is Bartholomew, Bartholomew mad at you? Uh, 
So we we were quite it's a dirty long story because we were in the sewers, and mm. we all wanted a quick bath. So we went into a bathhouse, which ended up also being a brothel. We only partook mm. in the bathings, and then we found out from God, what's his name, the l the little guy, the butler. Oh, oh. Gerard. Gerard. Gerard told us that uh, the the shields of the saint aren't very happy with Lummy. They never really were happy with me. To be that's, fair, that's true. That's... Uh... Would you like us to check in with you in the morning? Regroup then? I would... I would enjoy... I would greatly appreciate you checking in in the morning. I have rooms unoccupied here if you don't want to travel the city. Um, and Lamy, as far as Bartholomew, I... I doubt Bartholomew himself is angry at you. That's a little... I need to have a chat with Gerard. He's a little over over eager with his gloom and doom sometimes. And I feel like there are larger things on their plate than a night, two nights, taking a bath at a brothel. And I'm sure if we chat with which you know who owned the spot? Helga. Uh, my hippogriff does not own a brothel. Her name was Hannah. Let me, let me. I can with, I can smooth things over there. That's that's less of a problem. Hannah is. Uh, oh, I'm not worried about this problem. It's not a problem per se. It's no, not a problem. Things going on there there are and i will chat with gerard but hannah lets you in on a little family secret hannah is bartholomew's niece i'm calling the police hmm. <laughs> <laughs> i did not see that coming neither did bartholomew <laughs> uh he's a Did you get there, Robbie? <laughs> oh. Nope. I did not catch that. <laughs> He's not good. So what, go to bed, wake up, come talk more? I still want to go look at the explosion. We can't stop you, but... Lomi, there are smarter I'm people tired. than us looking at the explosion. You're not wrong. <laughs> what are you, are you telling me that you're an explosives expert as well? No. No. Why not, do you want to see? Not by any stretch of the means. Then why do you need to see this explosion? Curiosity. Yeah, what they say about curiosity. It's good for you. No, it killed the penguins. I've never seen a penguin. But then exactly. they came back. That's... Finish the phrase. <laughs> Lami, if you would like to see the scene of the explosion, I will escort you. Hopefully that will help ease over any nonsense. You can be my personal drunk escort and bodyguards. <laughs> <sighs> or you can wait and we could all go to bed. Fine. We'll go to bed. Very well. And he turns as if he's about to wave something and Gerard has already opened the back door and is walking in. Uh, and he goes, oh, Gerard, right. 
um, set them up in the the visiting suites. Those rooms should be close enough together that they don't feel like they're isolated in a it's it's fine. Also, Gerard. They were at Hannah's. Why would we why would Bartholomew be It's fine. And Gerard goes Oh, I did not know they were at Hannah's, sir. That one's that was my mistake. Would you like me to inform Bartholomew? No, no, it's fine. We'll I'll let him know when he comes in the morning. And he turns to all of you and goes, Thank you. For at least all coming out of this alive. And he turns and walks out of the room. Does anyone help? Let's go to sleep then. Sounds like a plan. Sure, I'll I'll just like start shutting down in place. Uh, uh, Robbie, we want to find a bed, preferably. Understand that you need to lay down in order to sleep. This is how I begin my recharge cycle. And I just kind of squat down, eyes dim out. Good night, Robbie. <laughs> I'm going to just quick look for Lythar. Lythar has not returned. I'm going to go find a room. Okay. Uh, and so Gerard, unless anyone has anything they want to say to each other, Gerard will lead you to your rooms. Uh, with the exception of Robbie, who he leaves, he he positions the chair behind you in case you like lean back, you kind of fall into the chair. Uh, but everyone else he gives. Uh, these rooms are more for visiting dignitaries than uh, uh, than for for people like you. So these are swanky rooms uh, for people like you. <laughs> Traveling adventurers do not normally have the coin to afford places like this. this I've is, got money. <laughs> this is a swankified spot. Actually, Lummy, you're the only one who's kind of used to this level of opulence. <laughs> um, and so everyone goes well, to their rooms. Before I go to sleep, I'm going to sending Lythar. All I'm going to say is please don't eat it, just follow the directions. You do hear a I wasn't gonna eat it <laughs> As the message kind of closes Oh my god I don't have another message to send him back I was about to say um, I'm gonna stay up for a little bit And reread the letter Okay um, Everybody else is going to sleep Yep Yeah Okay so, time passes. It is, uh, it is the next morning. Uh, Isn't it like noon? <laughs> eight hours. Yeah, sorry. It is, it is around 11, 11 noon. You got your full, your full eight. You were right on the edge of exhaustion, but you, you made it. Y'all, y'all made it back. Got your long rests. Everybody's happy. Um, and uh, Robbie technically wakes up first, but he because he's chilling in the room. Um, <laughs> the rest of you, as you wake up, um, there is a letter in a nice blue envelope that's unsealed, but is slipped under your door, uh, and. Uh, as you guys are waking up and pulling open these letters, there's basically, it's a calling card. Um, and it just says, uh, debriefing noon. And gives directions through, uh, what looks like more servants passageways, 
um, to work your way through without being uh, without being spotted. Because uh, the note says, please be discreet. Does he think I am some kind of animal they have to hide in the shadows? You say to your empty room. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> I'm going to do what the letter says. I will also do what the letter says. I will do what the letter says. I'm going to go invisible. Okay. Are, are you taking the servants' quarters, or are you walking down the main the main hallways? I'm going to walk down the main hallway invisible. Okay. Um, are you in your armor? Or are you in, like, yeah. more... Okay. Um, give me... Give me three stealth checks um, while, you're, while you're cruising down this hallway. Actually, make it, make it two stealth checks. It should be, should be all set. 14 and 13. 14 and 13? Mm-hmm. Okay, so yeah, you you managed to work your way down. Um, while you're walking, you are hearing, um, working your way past some of the um, some of the lesser nobles that live on this estate, um, some visiting artists and things like that. All the commotion has been, all the the talk has been about the fight in the square and the giant monster that fell from the sky, uh, and just all and then the explosion and all all the chaos and everything that's been happening all around the city and what it could mean is it is it the end of the world is this is you know is the city cursed you know what what could this be like all kinds of rumor and hyperbole and people are just trying to figure out what the hell's going on in this city dragons uh, thank you thank you <laughs> <laughs> thank you You're well kendrick, kendrick is it here kendrick i appreciate you um <laughs> So, uh, Robbie, as you are the one, because you need a full eight to recharge. Six. Or do you, you need six. So, so at about ten o'clock, uh, you wake up. You you come out of your your hibernation, uh, scaring the absolute bejesus out of a couple of servants that have been cleaning the room, uh, tidying it up. Uh, none of them have touched the mayor's pile of parchment. In near his chair, uh, but they've like dusted the chairs and shifted everything around and made everything look presentable. Um, they did move the chair that was behind you and put it back up to next to the table. But when you moved, uh, the person was actually dusting you. You were being dusted, and you were just like, and they were like, Jesus Christ, and fell over. Uh, and, and the other one's like, Hello, I am Robbie, and hand him a drink. <laughs> And the guy's just like on the floor, kind of in that sp- like that kind of thrown back sprawl. And he's like, "Hi, Robbie. I'm Robert." And he looks. It is a pleasure to meet you. And looks over at his buddy, and his buddy's just like, uh, uh, so he takes the beer, and then he's just like, "Thanks for the beer, Robbie," and holds out his fist. And it's kind of just like, okay, never mind. <laughs> you have a good, you have a good day, sir. And he he doesn't drink the beer; he just takes the beer and leaves. Um, so as and as people are starting to trickle in, um, the mayor comes into this room at about eleven thirty. Um, he looks hungover as hell, uh, but is is not the worst for wear. Uh, coming out of the amount of drinking he had last night. Um, There's a drink waiting for him next to his stack of papers that he left on the table. Also, if I've been alone in that room for an hour and a half, uh, I would I would actually try to read that top paper without shuffling anything around. Okay. Um, the top paper of this stack... Hang on, I need to determine which letter is on top says heck off robot um so the do you want like the actual transcript or do you just want like because i can read you a whole transcript if you want or i can just give you the like the, the long and short of the message what do you uh give me the long and short and if you want to write it out later uh, i'm fine yeah okay just um, the long and short is fine so so the long and short is it looks like it's a letter from from ergen to the mayor uh, 
and he but he doesn't refer to the mayor by his name um he refers he doesn't refer to him by mayor or any title he calls him sultanus um that's a cool name sultanus alvaron uh and he so the letter kind of goes on a um you're talking about what they that the what the mayor what sultanus's dreams for the city are and what the two like how urgen seems to really agree with what sultanus is proposing turning it into a sort of a free city sort of the independent nation uh, where nobody like everyone is pretty much welcome and respecting all the large governments and nationalities but also existing separately from them and the idea of building a multicultural council and basically like just removing any sort of social elitism and building more of a meritocracy uh, and that Sultanus you know Urgen was very excited to assist in that uh, this letter is probably probably 30 years old. And so yeah, that's that's what you're able to read before the page turn. Um, so anything else you'd like to do before people start showing up? I haven't not told anyone anything for 30 years. Uh, no, that, that would pretty much be it. I'll probably just be standing, you know, as still as a machine when they all come in. Okay. Just um, kind of off in a corner somewhere. When the, the mayor comes in, he has a large tankard of something hot, black, and steaming. Um, it, it's the, the hot brown morning potion, and he's just like... Just digging, taking deep drinks of this stuff, and he sees the beer, and he goes, "Oh no!" Good morning. He's double fisting. He goes, "Oh, this is gonna be bad." Good morning, Robbie. Pounds the beer, sets it down, and then takes a large swig of the coffee. She's like, "Ugh." <sighs> the meeting should be beginning in about thirty minutes. If you'd like to take a seat. I do not require a seat. Thank you. Very good. All right. Then he goes back to his chair and sits down. And he doesn't look at any of his papers. He just kind of sits there staring into his cup of coffee. Um, so as all of you trickle down through these, these side entrances, um, Lythar has not come back. Um, but as as you guys trickle in, um, the first couple of people see um, see the shadow step out from what looks like the space between a tapestry and the wall. He just kind of steps through there and walks over. Um, and the more observant of you, um, this is probably about 10 minutes before the meeting starts. Um, so I'm assuming everyone's either on their way or is there at this point. Um, I don't know how punctual everybody is. <laughs> Um, I want to be there. I want to be there five minutes early. Okay. <laughs> so Lami doesn't see this. Um, but for those of you who are there, Brendan, uh, I didn't quite catch that. I want to be on time. Like exactly on time? Yeah. To be okay. on time is to be late. I want to get, I want to, I'm invisible right as the time is supposed to be. Like, <laughs> <laughs> hello, I'm in my seat. Um, okay. So yeah, about 10 minutes before, um, before the meeting, uh, the shadow steps through, um, and the more perceptive of you notice that he does not step directly into sunlight. He, because the sun is streaming through the windows, and he's very carefully making his way around. And he le walks to the mayor, and he leans over and whispers something in his ear, and turns to the rest of you. And goes, "Your friend is safe." Ergen gave him a specific task to fulfill. He is in no danger. He didn't try to eat it, right? You stopped him, at least? I did. <sighs> he, you know he, this toxic, right? Yes. Okay. Everything's fine. 
to reiterate. How are you? <laughs> uh, and he looks to uh, he looks to to thrall uh, and goes whenever whenever you are ready. I'm here to assist. And gives him gives him a polite bow and steps. It looks like he's walking down a flight of stairs, but he's disappearing underneath the mayor's chair into the shadows <laughs> there. Yeah. Like he's walking down a flight of stairs. Uh, Would uh, also like to point out customary drinks for everybody as they walk into the room. Yep, cold beers for everybody. <laughs> it's noon. <laughs> hey. It's 15 quarter till. It's five it's o'clock somewhere. somewhere. <laughs> I don't drink mine. I don't drink mine. Sorry, Robbie. Today's not the day for it. Do not drink mine. Who's sitting? Who's sitting next to me? I'll be sitting next to you, Lami. <laughs> I am standing. Okay. Um. So noon rolls around um as the clock above the mayor's estate is chiming noon uh what strike are you appearing on uh thrall are you showing up on 12 or because there's a big there's a big ass clock donging uh are you gonna show up on the 12th the 12th one or the 12th, what? The 12th one yeah so you got 12 seconds to figure it out <laughs> as it hits he's just like bam in in his chair the same chair he was sitting in previously um, and right around then, um, is that next to me? Where's that? Where does he poof up? I'm gonna freak out either way. I'm gonna like fall <laughs> yeah. over almost. Sorry, sorry, <laughs> Definitely jump out of her chair quick. I'm just gonna <laughs> make holy shit and just gonna jump up like very confused. <laughs> Real quick. Hello there. Uh, the mayor it, it, like is had his he's kind of sitting back in his chair and he was kind of doing that thing where you lean back in your chair and you're just like kind of trying to balance because you're bored um this is a large <laughs> chair and apparently he's gotten it down to a science because he sits in it all the goddamn time so he's just sitting there and then thrall poof, in, just appears and he just goes Whoa! and grabs the tape <laughs> like he drank enough of his coffee that he didn't spill any but definitely he was like Phew. <sighs> like settles the chair, scoots it forward, and it's just like God. <sighs> you don't have to make an appearance everywhere you go, you know. And that's coming from me. <laughs> we had to be sneaky. I was sneaky until the twelfth thing. Very sneaky. <laughs> Very, very sneaky. I also appreciate that everyone is, at the very least, punctual. Bless you. And from the hallway, you hear a sneeze, and the main doors open up, and <laughs> Bartholomew is pushing these doors open, and Atronix has pulled out a handkerchief and is wiping his nose. I saw uh, a finger. <laughs> and as so he's wiping off his nose, and his handkerchief and his face look like they're covered in soot. Um, and Bartholomew, as you get closer, start to see his armor is not silvery gray. It is ash. It is soot. It is it is dirty. Um, and they both look exhausted. They both look like they've been up through the night trying to uh, trying to sift through things. And they they walk forward uh, and stand at the. Um, the bottom of the circular council table where everyone is is seated. The mayor just kind of like is still adjusting his chair and he looks up and he goes, Thank you, gentlemen. Can I offer you a seat? And Bartholomew's like, No, no, thank you. I need to. I am. I'm too filthy. And Atronix just goes, A seat would be lovely. And sort of steps forward, and all of the ash and soot just like whoosh, falls. He snaps his fingers, and all the dust just whoosh, falls off of him. And he steps forward, and 
spins a chair around. One of the low back chairs spins it around. So he's sitting and he's kind of very unrefined, just like kind of straddling it and is looking over. And he uh, he sees one of the beers. Uh, he sits be- between. Uh, uh, he sits next to you, Thally, and he goes, "Dear, are you going to drink that?" No. no. Good. Thank and you. I instantly say. That is not for you and cast friends while I say that. Okay. Uh, he he has his hand on the tankard and he's just like, he's right. That is yours. You might be thirsty later. And he looks and he he's happy as a clamp and Bartholomew is just going. And he looks over to Ravi and looks back at him and is just like, you see that second of realization that he's like, oh shit. <laughs> oh no, things have happened. Uh, and during, like, I'm, while he's friendly to me, I'm just going to sidle up right next to him. Okay. <laughs> so, are, so he's sitting, or you're just standing next to him? Mm-hmm. Okay. Uh, and so after Atronics is kind of settling in Bartholomew is is finding a, a corner to be dusty and um, the the friends wears off and Atronix like it does that like he stiffens for a second and he looks around and he can't he doesn't notice you standing next to him and then he's like looking around the table and he looks and goes hello again hello I am Robbie. <laughs> Hello, Robbie. I'm Atronix. I I apologize for my earlier behavior. I believe we got off on the wrong foot. We shall see. <laughs> yeah, that's from a Goliath, so it echoes through the entire chamber. It's not as well concealed as you'd think. Uh, Bless you, Ronan. Thank you. Here's like, well, now that the dick waving contest is over, I think, I hope, I hope. And he looks at Atronics and Robbie. All right, that's the best I'm gonna get, I guess. Uh, what did you find? Every and Atronics gives a quick look around the table, and the mayor goes, "Every single person here received a letter from Ergen." They are in his confidence, therefore they are in mine. What did you find? And Atronix kind of... <clears throat> to put it bluntly, sir, not a goddamn thing. Whatever caused that crater turned pretty much that entire estate to dust. And there was a lot of dust to sift through, sir. There was not a lot to go on. What I can figure out was it appears to have been a a sample of an explosive that they were testing at the range whether or not it was developed for this intended purpose or they had a stash somewhere. Uh, the explosion looks like it originated in a basement, judging from the amount of ground that was shifted and powderized. Without knowing what was going on, without get, hearing from an eyewitness that it, what had happened, All I know is everything in there is is nothing but bits and powder. Have you heard anything from Ed? Ed? The the Ed's okay. Oh uh, no, yeah, he was the mayor's like, no, Ed Ed is fine. Ed was one of the few people that Ed, reported their own attempted kidnapping. If Everyone I may. else? Yes, go on. 
Are either of you demolitions or explosives experts? Bartholomew kind of goes, well, well no, I, I'm not an explosives expert. And Atronix goes, then I believe your data is inaccurate. Atronix goes, I Whoa. would be. That would be me. I believe our explosives expert is more knowledgeable than you. And I just look at Mori. When you think if anybody knows better than me, it's Ed. Do you think we should ask him? If it has to deal with explosions, I feel like he's the first person we should ask. And he lives in the range. The mayor looks to looks to Atronix and goes, "Do you is he still on the premises, or has he did he go back to his to his bar?" Atronix goes, "I will have someone bring him here immediately, sir. It's early enough that he's not going to miss his bar rush, so I think we'll be okay." Uh, and for a split second, he kind of looks up and his eyes glaze over pretty like just there's a quick flash, and he goes. He will be here presently, sir. And he goes, good. We, we will have some questions for him. What else did you find? And Bartholomew goes, there was... There was no magic there. I don't know how to describe it. But it was like an empty space in the world. There, the, there was some strangeness going on when I tried to find any survivors. I had to push through it. And Atronix will never say so, but he had to push a little harder than usual. Atronix kind of crosses his arms and kind of huffs a little, but doesn't disagree he goes, there, this was not this was an atypical explosion was there any sign of the people kidnapped None that I could see. Um, there was... Oh, I can't... I should have mentioned this earlier. And he pulls, he reaches into his pocket and pulls out a map of that quarter of the city and sets it down. And he starts marking points. And there are... Three, four, five... Six, there are eight points around the city all equidistant from that spot in the explosion. And that, that where the explosion occurred was directly in the center. And Bartholomew goes, these were the only unusual points of magic that we could find. And it looks like they were channeling energy to this point. A lot of energy. And it was it, it, the Tronix can speak more more plainly. But it was it was good. Wherever that energy was being directed. I I know good and I know evil, and this was good I don't know how to explain it and with nothing at the center point there's not a lot I can tell aside from it was a channel that's all we have sir can I take a look at the map and see if the building 
that uh, exploded that we were in is one of those points. Um, you can. Um, just doing a quick look. Um, this map does the building you were in that burned down uh, was not one of those points. Uh, it, these are all fairly localized. Um, these are all probably um, from from little notes that Bartholomew scrawled in the margins. It looks like these are um, abandoned, small abandoned shops, or just like a these. One of them looks like it was a basement somebody dug specifically for whatever was in there. Um, the warehouse that you guys burned down is a little further to the south and was pr uh, that's actually notated on Bartholomew's map uh, with safe house question mark and then the question mark is scratched out and it's underlined a couple of times so how can we help I don't know if I can send you all out into the city in daylight currently. Unless you're Why all... is that? You don't think we could hold our own? So, I, after spending all of that time listening and hearing, uh, I just put my hand down on the table in front of everybody because it has eight points and a center. And then without, actually, with saying, I believe I must go look at something. I'm going to the center, and I'm going to walk out and just head straight to the center of everything. Okay, uh, to the center of that that point where where all. Uh, yeah, the, the circular, I guess you said that was the mansion from last night. That was so. the center of the explosion. Yes. Yeah, uh, that's where I'm headed. Okay. Is anyone following? Robbie, wait. Can you wait? They just Look stop. It. I don't even really turn around. I just kind of perk up. Designation Battalion Commander for the Ashen Shade Unit. Provide report. Clarify. Report desig er, report date. I'll try whatever today's date is. Extrapolation of data. This is a symbol of Mechanus. Confusion as to why lack of magic in the center. We'll investigate and report further. kind of voodoo did you just pull on him? Atronics just is Permission to proceed. Atronics is sputter out in his chair and is just his eyes are like what the hell is going on? I think Robbie knows something. And I might have a key to figure it out. Robbie knows lots of things. I don't even comprehend quite all the things he knows. It's too many. But from the sounds of it, this might be tied to Mechanus and the Modrons? The, the person we apprehended uh, went by the name Red. Ergen believed he may be involved in the theft of a certain Modron. Side-eye Bartholomew there. <laughs> he was definitely interested in Modrons. This may be connected. I'll follow Robbie. 
I will also follow up. Oh, hell. And I kind of scoot my chair back and have it go against the stone <laughs> and stand up and... I suppose we're all going then. I guess so. Okay. And as you all leave, the mayor is just looking. He watches. He's mostly looking at Robbie and Thalia. And he's got Atronics. His his eyes are like, how come she got answers out of him that I didn't? It is normally that would be a wisdom, like an insight check. That's it's on his face. You've one upped Thalia. You've one upped Atronics better than Robbie did. You just you knew how to get it, and you just did it. Um, and Bartholomew is his stoic. Like he's very stoic, but his eyes are flicking to all of you, and he's not paying any additional attention to uh, really anybody. But his eyes do go to thrall and then down to the sword that he's wielding and then back up and he keeps looking at the rest of the room uh, and the mayor is sitting there with his hands with his fingers interlocked and he's sitting there and he's looking at the map because um, Robbie you're the, the brand is on the palm of your hand correct correct you have it palm up or palm down when you went over to the map I had it palm up like okay. I just kind of slapped it down on the table, yeah. So, so he's he's looking at the map and he's actually spun it around so he can look at it, and he's just looking at it. And as as you all leave, um, he's you're you're kind of left to your own devices because all three of them are deep in their own thoughts as you leave. And I think. It's a little early, but I think it's a good spot to take a break. <laughs> so, this is tense. Everybody, everybody got, everybody got a little no from Erkin. This is tense. Uh, um, let's take a twelve, and come back at nine, and we'll we'll do probably another hour, hour and a half, and call it a session. So, tense, tense. Guys, yesterday I discovered if I live to level 8, I can become a Tyrannosaurus Rex. <sighs> Alright, everyone's here. We're good. We're great. Mm -hmm. We're back. We'll get back. So, after another brief cry, because that's two weeks in a row for me, um, you guys are on the hunt. Y'all are, are trucking out to where uh, Duke Anderson's uh, house blew up. Oh, this song is much louder than the last one. Uh, this song is much louder than the last one because I'm not trying to be emotional and sad. This is also I don't uh, I don't know if this is the right song. We broke it. I God damn it, Groovy. Dear Groovy, I love you to death. Uh, Have you tried setting it to Wumbo? You know, you made that joke the last time I had a Groovy problem. I mean, <laughs> you're gonna need new material. Dude, it's like when it's like when Tom what happens if you just says try submerging in water it's just one of those things it's all what, the what time. happens if you drop it's through great. via link that's like better I, drop the it, it it does not like links it doesn't like well, links either it doesn't like links hmm. it's, it's funky um so we'll start here like it matters um so the 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 conglomerate of you um despite the mayor being like well we shouldn't have you walking around the city in broad daylight um proceed to walk around the city in broad daylight as yep. a collective <clears throat> to be fair mm -hmm. he didn't stop us correct because he's he's deep in thought um as was everybody else when y'all were leaving everyone's been been ogling everyone was kind of lost in their own thoughts with the robbie's very sudden understanding that there may be a problem here and thalia's encouragement to get him to spill the beans about it um pulling a, a title a name of a, a rank and a battalion name 
kind of out of nowhere to the rest of you. Uh, but it seemed to have a result. And so now you understand. Robbie believes that this is a, a symbol of Mechanus. And he, when he put his hand next to the symbol on Bartholomew's map, it matched. At least the, the eight-pointed cog and the central uh, sprocket, the center of the hole, matched. Uh, and so Robbie, leading this group, has, has taken it upon himself to go check out the source of this explosion. Um, and you all have decided to go with him. Uh, as you have all been walking through through the city, it's it's hectic, to say the very, very least, because there was an explosion less than 12 hours ago. Uh, the hubbub is dialed up a wee bit. There's a lot of people looking to like put out... There, there's no fires, but there is a lot of... Um, that purple haze has started to dissipate uh, as the sun's been coming through it. And as you guys walk, it's probably... 15 minute walk to the the site of this explosion um and you all um y'all are moving not super stealthily uh, i feel like robbie is very determined to get there um and our peep uh i got nothing to hide everyone's just just moving as a as a group with them um robbie are you slowing down for the members of the group with slightly less movement speed than you are yeah. uh you're just you're just trucking. I'm booking. Okay, Robbie's at a full sprint. Great. Um, so that will leave um, everyone who's running to try and keep up with Robbie. Give me a Constitution check. Everyone who's trying to keep up with Robbie, because basically Robbie, you're running. You are the pace car. So and, and then there. Uh, I got a four. Okay. Um, what did Frank get? Actually, I need to roll for Keelik. Oh, yeah. Where's yeah. Keelik? Did Keelik get a letter? Keelik did not get a letter. Oh, what a bitch. <laughs> Keelik did not get a letter. Stupid. <laughs> not main camera material, Keelik. Ke- uh, no, Keelik. My con check is a 12. Keelik's been with you guys for not super long. Ergen literally met him once right before uh, y'all went on this adventure. Um, so, uh, Thalia, what's your, what did you get I on your I am country? not trying to keep up. Okay. <laughs> walking, walking with a purpose. I'm just gonna hang out with Thalia. <laughs> okay. I got a 17, so, so, though. Everyone, Robbie, what was yours? What was your con check? Oh, you had uh... a yeah, you're you're the pace car, my friend. Uh, fifteen. Okay, so everyone who rolled thirteen or higher is able to keep pace with Robbie. Um, everyone else is gonna start to flag behind. Um, Thalia has decided to kind of like. Thalia intentionally failed to check effectively. It was just like, I'm going to move at my own pace, thank you, which coincidentally is very similar to what Mori and Frank are moving at, um, as well as Ronan and anyone else who will not super well. So you... Uh, I got time. 17, thank you very much. But you decided to hang back with Thalia. I did. So you are you are feeling so healthy uh, for your morning, afternoon constitutional uh, <laughs> strolling right along, doing your thing. Uh and so it's 20 minutes or so. Robbie, uh, Lummy, uh, Thrall was yours? 10. 10? Okay. Um, so Lobby and, and Robbie, you guys arrive at the, um, the estate. And it, it looks like there used to be a very nice kind of ostentatious looking gate here um, that has been blown open. <laughs> Uh, it has been the the gates were initially knocked out um, and th- it looks like from the tearing on the hinges it looks like everything was just blown outwards and they removed the gates and some of the larger pieces of fence to allow people to truck in and out um, and you know this this 
is very clearly the place because the, the purple haze is still you're, as you got closer you start to see the purple haze is sitting lower to the ground um, and Lami That's give me, me. Wis- give me a wisdom check Oh boy, let's hope Not that dice can decide to roll themselves better today because this is a bad thing. Hey, 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 what's my wisdom? Oh crap. Uh, okay, that's, that's an <laughs> <Yes>. 11. <laughs> okay, so you, 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 you're no, as you're running, you're starting to get just big lungfuls of this air, and you realize that there's something in this air other than dust. Something's making you feel. Not quite woozy, but something something's weird, and it's tickling at the back of your head because you felt this way before. It's glitter, why. isn't it? It's not glitter. No, <laughs> glitter is a plague upon all of humanity, and should not be in our ocean. Anyway, uh, no, there is no glitter in this explosion. Uh, Robbie, you are fine. You don't notice anything. Uh, you are very focused on the center of this explosion. Yay for a lack of lungs. <laughs> I don't have to breathe. Um, so, the rest of you, uh, probably five five to seven minutes behind, make your uh, make your appearance. Um, every so, um, Thalia, Ronan, give me wisdom checks. Ooh! Oh, plus zero. Uh, 19. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, I, um, oh, actually. Wait, sorry, 14. Um, I, I lied. Fally, if you want to give me Arcana, um, and Mori, give me Arcana as well. Alright, can I keep the same roll, or do you want me to roll again? Um, I'll let you keep the roll, because... I'll let you decide, because I didn't tell you what the roll was. Uh, I lied to you about the roll. It's a 19. Okay. So, yeah, Mori, if you want to make a... a, uh, I got a 14. 14. Okay. So, you're starting... As you guys... Ronan, especially, because you are super keyed into... Into the magic that kind of powers your existence... Um, you feel like that wellspring of anger, and as you're breathing, you, the air comes in, and it's it's like, to put it in, in terms that Ronan would get, it, you're damping a fire. The magic is starting to wane a little bit. It's not much, but as you're breathing these huge lungfuls, the fire is just, instead of um, instead of blowing up with this increase of oxygen, it starts to dim a little bit. And then as you exhale, it, it reverse it's an inverse bellows in your chest um i slap myself in the face okay does that fix Uh, it no that does not fix it um (laughs) i slap myself in the face again did that fix it no oh take two points of damage i was gonna say roll it a third do it a third time i'll make you roll damage um (laughs) you slow learner you uh (laughs) so the so um the two who rolled arcana checks um you're also you're getting a weird feeling um it's a it's a similar like it's like being under kind of under a blanket or like a like like a like a sheet has been draped over your over like the 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 life the magic in this area it's a weird kind of feeling thrall you're fine you are a-okay uh So, so y'all are, you've all gathered at the front gate of where this explosion occurred. We're in the smoke. You guys are in sort of, you, the, the pillar of the smoke is much heavier towards the front, but it's, it's sort of like after you've put out a campfire the night before and it's still like that residual burning. Um, that's really all that's left. I want to burn a detect magic. Okay. Uh, are you looking for anything in particular, or are you just taking a look around? I want to see if the smoke is weird. Okay. Also, like, to determine if it is weird, what kind of weird it is. Also, any fun magical items that may be laying in the soot that I could then take. 
for myself. <laughs> Sorry, louder for the loot goblin in the back. <laughs> um, so so you 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 kick off your detect magic. Um, you're getting nothing. Not a lack of magic. You are getting nothing. It is the difference between zero and null. It is like there there is just bupkis in Frank's the area. Frank's not even glowing. Uh, Frank is Frank is far enough behind you. Like all of your friends and everything are glowing like they are glowing their usual colors. Um, Robbie's a little brighter than he normally is, which is a little disconcerting. And Thrall is actually the the dark glow around the sword is beginning to um, it's working its way up his arm. Uh, and he doesn't seem to have any any. He doesn't seem to notice. Uh, but like the 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 glow of the sword is starting to begin to work its way up towards like his uh, the middle of his upper arm. But you asked about the smoke, mm-hmm. and the smoke is nothing. Hmm. It, it it's it's. You see the smoke, you know that there had to be something that caused this explosion and an explosion this size as far as you know only can be done magically but there's nothing <clears throat> uh did we see his skin turn different colors when looking at all of us and all magic? like do we know do we know you guys do uh, glow yes you do glow okay so yeah as as he's looking as his gaze is passing over everybody he he hits all of the usual colors um that i'm if you want to make up what colors everybody else is uh because we've determined robbie and thrall if you want to make those up or we could do that in post Um, post so but as he looks around his skin stops glowing when he's looking at the smoke and it's it there there's a a lack of anything and then he turns his head back and looks at you and it pops back in again but the second he starts looking back towards the source of the explosion there is bupkis zip nada goose egg zip zero nothing no nada nope not a goddamn thing i'm gonna swirl my hand in a circle to try and move around the smoke uh yeah the smoke um so you guys are the, the the from where you guys are there's a little bit of dust and haze um and as you're uh, the, the, the dust and some of the stuff that still hasn't quite settled yet is is following the currents of your hand. Uh, there's no real... Uh, Ronan, there's no real effect, um, but you're also... You are currently upwind of where all the smoke is drifting. Because all the smoke is drifting up into the east. Hmm. Uh, east. <laughs> so. Has anybody seen anything like this before? Nope. Are we all together now? I would like to check on something. Hold on, I might have to turn my video off. Yay, latency. Uh, <laughs> Robbie's face goes blank. I would like to check on something. Ronan. Hmm. I assume that there is no magic coming from the smoke. As you skin stops glowing, and we have been told by Atronix that there was a lack of magic here. Correct. Would you please remove yourself from just the smoky area and take a look at, and I'm going to point in a direction that would be one of the cog wheels, or one of, yeah, one of the wheels of the cog out mm-hmm. towards the point. Okay. Do you detect magic along this path? Uh, I do that. Ronan, what's the range on your detect magic? We don't know. <laughs> We go through this a lot. (laughs) It doesn't tell us. Because it says you can use you can cast magic. Yeah. 30 feet. It doesn't say 30 feet anywhere. It it does. It does when you look at the spell that you're casting. Oh, I I click on it. (laughs) Ah. Dragons. Anyway. uh, It doesn't tell me 30 feet. D&D Beyond, please sponsor us for the love of God. <laughs> uh, still can't love of, it still doesn't tell me a range on it. Just saying. 
cool. So write it down right now that it's a 30 foot range. Okay. Uh, I'm going to write so, that down too in case we, <laughs> when we circle back to it. Thank you. Um, so um, looking at the ground, Rona, in the direction Robbie has pointed you, because um, Robbie, there was one coming directly from uh, the direction you just came from. And Ronan, as you look down directly under your feet, you see a. There's no magic in it right now. But imagine a trough dug into the ground about three feet down. But this trough is about three feet wide and is this gentle steady white light not unlike Robbie's uh yes Robbie there's actually under the ground there's like a a line of it (sighs) please knock me out if this goes awry and I walk to the center where all of those points would converge. Okay. What did um, you just say? I follow Robbie and I pull out the mall that I got from what's his face? <laughs> from Keelik? From Keelik. <laughs> and Keelik is standing there and he watches you pull out the mall and he's standing next to Thrall and he just goes hmm. looks tiny um, on him. I'll also follow Robbie. Okay. Uh, Robbie, give me a constitution saving throw, please. Oh, boy. Can I assist him by bonking him in the head? No, that will actually give him disadvantage. Oh. 14. 14. Okay, so as as you're walking closer, you've... Suddenly, you're starting to feel... It's harder to move. Uh, it's the there. Um, you're you're walking, and all of a sudden, it's like you're trying to step through heavy mud that's covering. But it's not like your your legs aren't moving. It is a wall that you are trying to push through, and all of your your limbs take a little more effort to move. Um, and as the rest of you, um, Ronan and Thalia, are you sticking? Are you right behind him? I want to be uh, in mauling range. Okay. For you, that could be like 100 feet because you can just huck it at him. Um, but both of you give me... Um, just throw Kendrick at him. Both of you give okay. me con saves as well, please. Natural 20. 10. Where do you go? Okay. So, so Rodan, you are... You're fine. You You're able to just kind of like keep going because you you've already kind of that smothering effect starts to amplify and you you kind of tap into that rage a little bit at your core and you're like hey hey wake up now and that primal wellspring of magic powers up a little more and you you're you're able to move just fine thalia you're starting to feel like you did before you knew you could cast magic you're feeling that that tenuous grip you had on the way the world works start to slip outside your grip. Uh, you have probably uh, heading towards the center of all of those points. You've got probably twenty feet. So, uh, Chris, you. Oops, sorry. Go ahead. Do. <clears throat> I guess the question is, did we manage to move ahead of Thalia? Did I stop completely? Did you, like, how are we laid out right now? And can I move? Um, you can move. Because uh, okay. you, you made the save. Ronan can move because he made the save. Um, Thalia, you... You have the choice of staying or going. You're currently the one most feeling the effect of this... This zone. I'm gonna try to keep going off further. Okay. Um, so Thali, there's a th- as you guys are walking, there's a quick pause. Thali kind of catches her breath, and then she 
kind of sets her soldiers and keeps walking with you. Another round of con saves, please. You're about 10 feet away from it at this point. 18. Uh, 25. Modified 20. Okay. Uh, so there's, as you keep pushing, um, and Ronan actually is, is, so uh, Thalia, you find out when you're standing kind of near Ronan, it's, it hurts less. Um, and you're able to just kind of keep pushing, um, pushing forward. So you're about to hit center. Um, give me another, everyone give me another con save. Ro uh, Ronan, because you've rolled over 20 both times, uh, you give everyone advantage. Cool. Woo. Including you, myself for now. Yes, because you've Super basically cool. tapped into your magical wellspring and you are just kind of, as it's starting to smother you, you're basically amping it up and continuing to juice it. Well, I appreciate that because that gives me a 13 with advantage. 18. Modified 20 again. Modified 20. Perfect. Um, so <laughs> as you get closer and closer and closer to the center, Robbie is able to just keep pushing and puts himself dead center where all of these points are. Um, Ronan, you get close, but you're not quite on the center because as you continue to get closer to that center point, even you trying to juice yourself up, just the magic is its starting to have a hard time resisting whatever the hell this is. Um, Thalia is able to kind of stand between the two of you and bridge the gap. Um, but Thalia, even there's a point where you can't get any closer without it, without feeling like your ability to cast magic will just disappear and you don't know if you'll ever get it back. So Robbie, you're at center. What would you like to do? Uh, I'm going to guess from this description, I can actually feel you emanating. Cut out, you cut out right towards the end. Okay. Uh, can can I, from the description I'm assuming, can I feel power emanating into me from this spot? Like, it, do I feel it stronger here? or You're feeling, um, because you're dead center, give me... Give me an arcana check, please. Uh, with advantage, because you know this, you know this energy. Double twos for a seven. Okay, so you, once once it, it's weird because once you break through, and you you align yourself with dead center on where this map would be. There's suddenly it. You've kind of stumbled into the eye of the storm. And there's magic here. And it's not necessarily power radiating because it's not it's not coming in. It feels like you're standing on a spring, like a hot spring, and there's just a little bit of power coming up through. It's not a lot. And but you, you do feel a little bit of, of some familiar power trickling up through. Uh, I, I am gonna start trying to just channel the uh, the mechanis energy that mm. is fueling me. I guess uh, mm. like I was going, basically holding an eldritch blast in both hands, mm. and I'm gonna touch him to the ground. Okay, so you're you're doing a, a pseudo spirit bomb kind of thing. Um, as you as you you have this this. Um, so correct me if if what I'm describing is is different in any way. So your your hand, your right hand just shifts into the cannon, and you see this sphere of the the very familiar sphere of light. But Robbie keeps holding it, and he puts his other hand on the end of it, and it starts to grow and grow, and he leans down and puts it into uh, goes to touch it to the ground. Robbie, give me. Uh, Give me a strength check. <laughs> that is a 13 total. Okay, so as, as you're pushing down, you feel something resisting. 
and at you, like you you guys even further away through the haze you could see Robbie just dropping and putting pushing his weight down onto this thing onto this ball of light and energy he has and it's not sinking um Thalia and Ronan a little closer with a little better view um and Robbie as well it's almost like it's the same polarity it's you put two north side magnets together they're never gonna touch they're gonna get real close and you can try to force it but they will never connect I want to try and walk in sorry let me I want to try and walk in okay um give me are you trying to like get up to where they are yep okay give me um yeah give me give me three con saves 15 okay so you make it the first chunk 17 okay and a 17 okay so you get close you you get to a about where Ronan is standing and you also feel that that wet uh, woolen blanket like smothering your your magical senses um, you feel the um, the the dragon you you feel her in your head and she sounds a little quieter and a little further away as you get right up to where Ronan is and to the point where like if this was a room, she would probably be like a hundred. She'd be on the other side of the football field. Um, like, you know, she's there and you could get in touch with her, but it would be a lot of work and it would suck the entire time. Uh, I push harder. Okay. You're trying to get into the circle. Yep. Okay. Give me one more Kanze, please. Come on, baby. music that musical sting uh 24 <laughs> perfect so so lami ronan you feel like a hand on your shoulder as long as like, excuse me and just like <laughs> plows through uh and walks into this circle so robbie as you're forcing this energy down lami all of a sudden you're looking down and you see these male these plate male shoes standing in front of you and you look up and you see the whole six foot six face of your dragon friend hello <laughs> hello <laughs> i require assistance what would you like me to do only words that spring to mind channel divinity we can give that a shot Robbie, what are you trying to do? I'm gonna use Valley my channel asking divinity. the real questions. Robbie, what's your <laughs> what's your plan here, buddy? I use my channel divinity. Robbie report. <laughs> Unsure whether source of power or drain of power. Attempting discovery. Okay. Uh so channeling divinity, uh, Lobby, what? Give what me is that your... sacred weapon, boy. Give me that sacred weapon. I'm going to draw my glowy sword. Okay. We, we have, we have swords, ladies and germs. Uh, <laughs> Robbie, give me, um, oh God. So, so Lami, as you pull your sword and you, you, that familiar blue flame comes out, um, in the center of this circle, you feel that connection with her click back to full. Mm -hmm. And you hear her go, Oh no. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> uh, and she goes, Wait. Wait. Waiting. What do you feel? on the other side think. of this what do i feel on the other side of this uh are you so it, she's politely asking you to use that divine <laughs> sense of yours that you have five uh -huh. charges on uh-huh um on the other side of this hole 
is pure law. It is the embodiment of this is the rule and you follow this rule. And it's somehow this this ironclad justice and yet right and wrong, yes and no, is kind of is starting to percolate up through this where Robbie is pushing down. And you're also picking up that his energy matches that, and there is an enormous source of power on the other side of this thing. Robbie, what, what exactly are we doing with this? There's there's quite a bit of energy on the other side. I am attempting to contact it. Would you recommend a different course of action? Oh, he's going to slam her hand down on the ground and cast to spell magic. I'm okay. Not quite sure. <laughs> Uh, give me um, because that's a target, right? Uh, or is it target or area? Uh, creature, object, or magical effect within range. Okay, what effect are you trying to get rid of? I'm trying. What what can I sense? Um, there's not a ton because of that that magic dampening field. Um, but you know that Robbie's channeling a lot. You can see Robbie's channeling a lot of power, and you can see Lamy has pulled his sword and is channeling power into that. I'm gonna cancel Robbie's. You're gonna shut down Robbie's. <laughs> okay. Um, Specifically, you can Robbie. do that. <laughs> um, okay. Great. Uh, we just so, turn Robbie off. So, so Robbie, you're channeling this power. You're pulling and pulling and pulling, and all of a sudden, it just and just cycles back into your arm and powers down. And both of your your hand and your cannon slam down into the ground. The and you once it hits, you realize the ground is kind of swampy. And you sink a little bit into the into the dirt. Uh, so, Lami, you are still you are still glowing with your sword up. I just I don't know what to do. Lami, I don't think it's a good idea. You don't think what is a good idea? I don't think sending any more power into this area is a good idea. What if we could remove it? What if we make things worse? We do that sometimes. I'm going to see if I can attempt to reverse what I was just doing. To to reverse and pull power yeah. out. Okay, give me Give me a con save, please. The big one. This is an important role. Nat 20. <gasps> Perfect. So, Robbie, having been stymied by, by Thalia, you're in the ground, and the thought occurs to you why not pull? And you, you sort, you're kind of inverting your own polarity, and just you start to draw power. And Lami all of you start to see this blinding white light start to pour. And Robbie, the ground in front of you starts the the wet dirt starts to kind of bubble and it starts to shift into this white pool around you and starts to pour and pour and all of a sudden it, it's starting to get to the point where you, you it's you're starting to overload you're starting to draw like you've started this draw and it keeps going uh robbie lami um actually um because thalia you did some research on this um who did research on mechanis that's a broad question for the for the room i definitely didn't 
<laughs> cool. So, so Thalia and Robbie, give me religion checks. Or Arcana, whichever is higher. I will allow either one. Hold on, D and D Beyond is not cooperating for me, so because there's awesome shit. Robbie, you uh, Robbie, you get advantage because you are primarily connected to this if you want it. Because I, I, I hear that sigh and I love I love Nat ones, but this is a little No, it was a seven, but I knew even with a plus five. So that's uh with advantage seventeen total. So Arcana okay. or Arcana or religion, whichever you'd prefer. Arcana. That's a nineteen. Okay. So so um and Lami, you're seeing Robbie sink his hands in and the ground starts to turn white into this white murky this white liquid um that's a little too silvery to be kind of anything that makes sense and robbie all of a sudden you're you're looking down and thalia you realize it too the stories are that the primus itself sits in a in a glowing white pool and it's entirely possible that if starting to starting to put dots together one of the one of the things you heard one of the stories about this this sub faction and machina is they are feeding people to the primus they're throwing things into this pool in an attempt to turn them into machines and make them part of the, the greater machine spirit and you're in the basement of one of their destroyed hideouts. You're at you're at ground zero of a null magic explosion. In an effort, it starts to click. This is a portal to the Primus pool, and Robbie has started to drink from it, <laughs> and is it, Robbie is starting to glow. And the light is starting to punch through this. You're starting to see light shooting through seams and patches in the duster that he's wearing. And he's just char- like just charging and charging. Robbie, give me another constitution save, please. Oh, no. Uh, for those for the uh, those of you outside the circle, you're seeing all of a sudden Robbie is beginning to everyone looked like they were fighting through something heavy and thick, and Robbie is dropped to his hands and knees and has started to glow. Mori, it start like <laughs> your your first reaction is oh shit he's gonna blow up. <laughs> it it's starting to look like when you've had experiments go horribly horribly wrong, and there's just too much power in too small of a space. Uh, Twelve. Can I reach Robbie? Uh, you would need to make a con save to push through the rest of the magic. Uh, Mori, were you about to say something? Yeah, guys, I feel like we should probably leave. I'm gonna Dark cast Sanctuary. The purple on haze Robbie. and the glowing white. I'm a, I'm a, I think we should leave. I'm going to message Robbie. Um, designation Battalion Commander. Uh, initiate shutdown of unit R66Y. I cast Sanctuary on Robbie. What do I think of glowing Robbie? Because um, I had specific instructions to bonk him on the head. If things started to go bad, <laughs> things have started to go bad. Are, I'm gonna bonk Robbie on the head. Well, cool. he's got sanctuary now, buddy. <laughs> That's true. So, and you got to make a con save to get near. So, so Rodan, give me if you want to make a con save to do a melee attack to get in there. You will also then need to make a wisdom save against Lami. In order to hit him, or you choose another target. Spoilers: the only other target currently is Lame himself. <laughs> also, what would I technically do? Uh, oh, no. To be fair, also whoever he hits is a disadvantage because he's within five feet. <laughs> because he has protector. Yep. Uh, <laughs> uh, so, so Ronan, while you're making that decision, Thrall, you hear. 
that mental door slam open. There's no knocking this time. And then Dancer is standing in the doorway. And Dancer goes, we need to run. This now is intense. not the time to stand and watch. I'm gonna bonk. You're gonna run in and bonk? I'm gonna run in and bonk and rage. I okay. don't know if it'll do anything. So the two, oh dudes, who are, the two dudes who are running in, uh, Thalia and Ronan, give me con saves. This needs what have I should done? I should I roll on my rage table too? Uh let's get you in there first. Unless you're I was trying to protect Robbie from anything else that was I'm, coming into him. I'm raging on my Ronan. way. So <laughs> Okay, so God, there's a lot happening. So gimme give gimme give Uh the Constitution saving throw is a twenty-three. Saving throw or check? Um I don't know if it makes a difference for me, but it what might... have I been having? Uh, save. Let's let's just do save. You had me do save. Okay, it's yeah. the same. Then six. Twenty-three. Uh, that's why I used message. <laughs> uh, how do I spell this word? Oh, there oh. we go. Um, he'll be back. Gary will return. Um, so. Uh, Ronan, as you, or, um, Ronan, what was your save? Uh, 23. Okay. Uh, Thalia, what was your save? Six. So, Thalia, you're starting to push, and you just, like, you're not able to get that traction, because it's, it goes from re- moving away your sense of, like, magical awareness to starting to give you tunnel vision. Uh, Ronan is able to just kind of step through it and power through it, get to the center of the circle. Uh, Ronan, give me a rage, please. D8. Ooh! That you is a one. Is that a teleport? Uh, <laughs> I don't remember. Ronan, rage table here, because I pulled it up separately. Ooh! Uh, y- cool! Uh, roll a d10, please. Okay. <laughs> a roll after a roll usually is a bad thing. That is a 10. Perfect. Everyone in this crater takes 10 necrotic damage. Perfect. Does that include me? Yes. Everyone. I might have resistance. Um, Robbie. I do have resistance. Give me a concentration. Uh... Thrawn and I in the crater, or are we like outside? You guys are on the edges of the crater. Okay. Um, y'all are y'all are safe Concentr- from this explosion. Uh, uh, concentration is just a con check, right? Con save. Again, save. so okay. so it'll be it'll be a ten. You have to beat a ten to keep this thing going, or you can intentionally yeah. fail. Oh, to keep the, um, upon hearing the message in my head, I would attempt to actually shut down shut it down okay um so with with that message in your head you're trying to shut it down and you you you're having trouble you're trying to close these floodgates and it's there's just too much pressure and but as this blast of energy comes out from ronin that hits everybody around him um so ronin you gain 40 temp hp <laughs> um, ronin is now <laughs> fucking juiced uh, there's this this black blast a lot of, of energy, juice. and this shockwave actually it like staggers people. And Robbie, it pulls one of your hands off the ground, and it's enough to shut down that flow of energy into one into your your still the one that's your hand. And then you're able to pull your hand away and finish the shutdown. Um, the floor around all of you is still this glowing white pool. Um, and Robbie There's, is no longer in contact with it? Robbie is no longer Robbie is still glowing vibrantly. Robbie, you feel overcharged. You need an outlet for this energy, or you need to take you need to try and contain it. Um, because otherwise this will end poorly. <laughs> uh once or twice during the war you saw somebody get juiced up like this, and it always ended poorly. I point the gun directly in the air and just fire off the biggest Aldrich blast I can. 
Okay. Uh, so another Dragon Ball Z reference. Robbie just points at this or Trigo. this cannon that you've seen do like really crazy blast of energy. The blast that comes out of this cannon is about five feet wide. It's or is five feet in diameter and just like a beacon into the sky. And it lasts a good ten seconds before Robbie just and once it's done it just it shuts out and Robbie is standing there and there's the sound of heated metal ticking as it cools down oh and I shut down if I release that much power I finish the, the command I was given yep so Robbie so and fall. Is the keeps the pose and, and just falls into the pool is the pool still there the pool is still there is Robbie like submerged completely in the pool or is he like not completely it's only a couple of inches deep um and Robbie like Robbie landed so he's like on his arm most of his face is out of this pool I am gonna do the only thing that I know how to do smite I'm gonna pull, I'm gonna pull Robbie out of the pool mm -hmm. just away from that and I'm gonna drop my shield two hands all the smites. I'm gonna, I'm gonna throw in a thunderous smite too. You're smiting the ground. I'm smiting this pool. I'm pissed at it. Okay. Um, cool. So burn your spell slots. I, I guess. Put all of this divine energy into this pool. Okay. So so the there's a flash of light. There is a blinding flash of blue white light that hits everybody. Even it's the guys, thunder. even the guys on the outside edge, there is a thunderous explosion and a flash of light. And when the spots clear from you, there's a there's a weird split second of an image burn in of a figure taking their shield and slamming it into the ground. Uh, and there's a flash, and then the thunder, and as your eyes clear and your head starts to starts to clear um all of you have been knocked over oh those of you who are standing have been knocked over the pool where the pool was there is now just a crack in the earth that is burning with this bluish whitish fire and lami and uh those of you at the circle see the liquid just trickling in and pouring down and you hear it burning uh, Lami, you're you hear your your you hear her in your head go this won't bother anyone <laughs> if the Primus wants it back he can ask me and I'll give it back to him but this has been tidied a tidied bitch uh, <laughs> The rest of you, as you are all picking yourself up and feeling the shockwave, that oppressive wet blanket is gone. This has been basically... You don't know if it was blown away by the explosion or overloaded. Uh, Thalia, you have a couple of theories about maybe that much power in a small space, the reaction between two different types of magical energies from two different gods of the same alignment caused some sort of cascade reaction or something. But all you know is like that purple haze, that purple smoke is gone. And you are just standing in the middle of a crater with a crack at its center. And you look over at Robbie, who is still in that position. And the duster he's wearing from where he fell into that white pool is now a shining white. And his arm looks a little shinier than it did before. But there's it's, it's almost a perfect line down the back of his duster splitting the black and the white. As he's laying there on the dirt, shut down. Uh, and uh, Mori and Thrall, you guys feel that when you pick yourselves up, you feel that the zone is no longer oppressive and trying to keep you out. I'm going to pick Robbie up. I'm going to walk towards everybody else. Okay. Uh, yeah, Thrall and Mori, what are you guys doing? Are you just waiting? 
I'm just waiting. Okay. Just uh, throw them over my shoulder like a sack of potatoes. Like a mechanical <laughs> stiff sack of potatoes. This is my robot. <laughs> uh, between the two of you, Mori and Thrall, you hear a fuck me. <laughs> and Ed is there. Standing there with just his hands on his hips and just Fuck. What the hell was that? I just kinda look at him and shrug. <laughs> I'm really didn't see much. Alright. What the <sighs> Listen, if you guys keep causing all these explosions around the city, I'm gonna have to hang out with you more. <laughs> <laughs> and he's standing there and it looks like he's got like a toolkit on his hip um he has a pair of goggles sitting up on his forehead uh but in the dust and dirt it looks like he didn't have the chance to pull them down um at any point and so he's he's waiting there with you two while um what's everybody else doing long as long as hauling robbie yeah. back getting Robbie out of this circle. I'm going to sit down where, like, wherever I had been, like, knocked over, I'm just going to stay there. Mm -hmm. I'm going to stand up and kind of look at myself and see these kind of, like, black wisps of energy kind of flicking off of my skin and just kind of reach down and pick up some of the ash and just kind of wash my hands with it mm -hmm. and just kind of hang out there for a minute. Okay. Washing your hands with ashes? <laughs> the, the flicks of shadow and like the little flicks of things are still coming off. Um, they're, oh, some of them are big enough that they're actually pulling off the dust and the ash with it as it's kind of starting to float. And there's, it's mostly centered around your arms, but as you're sitting there, it starts to envelop sort of your whole silhouette to be kind of this it, it looks like you're on fire but the fire is shadow and moving very slowly it's just you, asked, you, you asked for this waving coming aura through? trickling off of uh, off of you fuck so at this point, Lamy's made his way back to the rest of the group. I'm gonna put I'm gonna put Robbie down, mm -hmm. and I'm gonna walk back to the center. And I'm not gonna say a word. Okay, being uncharacteristically quiet for Lamy. Um, Robbie, even though you're shut down, you feel that energy you you felt yourself connect with the primus you you felt yourself hook up and link up with the source of your power oh you hooked up and there was you're not sure if there was information exchanged but there was a connection there was some kind of switch, some kind of uplink. You're not entirely sure what all made it through. But you did hear uh, you did hear people screaming and splashing. Splashing. Oh, it's, it's floaties. <laughs> Those arm ones, fucking. Mm. <laughs> so, what is uh, Lami? You're Ronin. You're you're still standing at the center. Thalia is still on the ground. Lummy's walking back to center. Has and it been less than 10 minutes since I used Detect Magic? Have I passed Thalia? Mm -hmm. Yes, but you raged. 
Ah, yes, you are right. Um, yes, you have passed Thalia at this point. I'm gonna just give Thalia a nice little lay on hands for 10 HP. Don't have to do that much. Uh, whatever, whatever it is, five, five, five's the number. Get her, get her back on, get her back on her feet. Yeah. Okay. And I'm gonna continue my path towards the center of this crater. Okay. Um, meanwhile, on the edge of the crater, Ed's going to look at uh, the the conscious figures over there and be like, "He's can we go in there? He's just he's just walking in there." I think it's safe now. All right. Well, let's let's go. You guys said you didn't see anything. Let's go check the shit out. And Ed. Right starts to make his way forward. I'm also going to follow in. Uh, Thrall, as you start walking forward, you don't feel that sense. Like, you, you definitely don't feel anything, but you do... You feel Dancer less and less the closer you get to the center of this. Uh... uh like you're like the dancer is further away from you than than she was earlier she's still there she's still on your hip and she's still in your head but she's further away as you get closer and closer and closer are there still flames coming out of the middle of this thing uh, at this point, the, the all of the liquid has drained, and the fire has gone out, and there is just a deep, dark crack in the floor. Hmm. I'm gonna get up and go towards Robbie, and start trying to walk away towards where one of the the locations was. Towards one of the sites. Okay. Um, pick a carnal direction because there's one in each each of them. Including the halfways. You said we passed one, right? Kind uh, of... Correct. There's there's yeah. one. The, whichever the one is on the way to the the mansion. I, my goal is to get Robbie as far back to the mansion, like far away. But I want to, I want to stop at the site quick on my way. Okay. Um, so on your way out, um, you kind of got Robbie. It's a little awkward um, because he's still kind of in this like kind of Captain America ish pose. Um, but you're able to kind of start walking him. Uh, it will take you a couple of minutes to to get to the site. Did I notice Thalia leaving? Um. Yeah, I would. I would think that you because she was kind of on the ground for a couple of minutes, and then she stood up and walked over and picked up Robbie. Um, I'll go with her and pick up Robbie. Okay. So yeah, the the three of you are moving off in a group. Um, Ed has has come to the center, um, and the closest descriptor for how it feels at the center of the circle is it's sacred. This site feels like the church, you know, like the Vatican, um, Notre Dame, and uh, like pick all of your favorite religious sites and slam them all into one square foot, and that's that sort of palpable sanctified energy that's pouring off of these things. And Ed is looking around, trying to figure out what the hell's going on. Uh, what would y'all like to do? Hi, Josh. Hey, Josh. Sorry. You're good. <laughs> um, we took our break early, which is weird. Um, threw off everyone's groove. You threw, threw off my groove. My groove. <laughs> no, Groovy's still here. Uh, oh, shit. Yeah. Well, it been perfect if you right clicked and kicked Groovy right then. I, I thought about it. <laughs> Guys, don't forget um, on the bard. <laughs> I got him. Anywho. Up. Anywho. Um, Sam. Um, what, what are y'all doing? Just carrying Robbie. Robbie to wherever Thalia wants Robbie to go. Okay. How do I, how do I feel in the middle of this crater? Sacred is the only descriptor. Uh, this place went from no energy to the next greatest holy site. Excellent. 
I'm gonna sit down and have a good old meditation about it. Okay. Are you are you trying to have a chat with with her, or are you just oh, doing oh a yeah, thing? Oh, 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 oh the whole thing, all the okay. stuff. Okay. Um, Morian Thrall, what are y'all up to? I'm gonna back away from. You. Okay. I guess I'm just kind of standing there. Okay. Um. If you want to, more if you want to help Ed do some do some research and get some readings, um, and if you wanted to do uh, Arcana or Religion checks uh, at advantage because you're kind of co-helping each other, see what the hell's going on. Sure. Um, Thrall, as you're backing away, you feel Dancer get closer the further out from this circle you get. And as you step outside that boundary, um, you you hear a polite knocking. And she goes, I appreciate that. It was making me slightly, slightly uncomfortable. And I appreciate you taking my, I appreciate you being considerate. I was feeling the same way. That was unusual, to say the least. Good and evil neutralize each other. The end result is zero, but good and good is... <sighs> you get the, there's the shiver. And you, you, you hear and feel Dancer shudder, and you feel yourself shudder a little in response. I feel it in my teeth. It's... it's It's not good. It's never a good sign when good is pitted against good for any reason. Uh, so, uh, Mori, how did you roll? Uh, 15. Okay. Um, so you and Ed are starting to do check out what the hell's going on, and all that you're picking up is pure divine and magical good and order and law and ed has started to go off and starting to do calculations on like can you weaponize this shit uh because that's kind of what he does how he's like can i make a, a good grenade can i make a grenado goodness um a holy hand grenade if you will theoretically yes uh <laughs> John, Cle up, up, two, three. <laughs> John Cleese is going to watch this and sue the One, shit out of us. Three. If John Cleese watches this, I love your stuff. Hi. Please sue me because I want to talk to you because you're great. Um, I'll talk to you in court. <laughs> talk to John Cleese through an army of lawyers. Um, but, and that's, that's one of... Uh, the the sheer amount of good here it seems like the kind of place that like you could build a, a running the math mori like this that much concentrated like decency and goodness basically you turn this into a court and the residual the magical fallout would mean you never have a mistrial like or somebody comes in buys it and builds it into a temple and it is the most blessed place on earth normally this kind of juice takes centuries of people coming and being devout and somehow this happened in about 15 seconds uh, the three of you that are trekking off to one of the sites um uh, ronin is your detect magic back up I mean, I can use it again. Up to you, um, because otherwise it would be a history check to find it to remember where it was on the map. I'll detect map. It's only thirty feet, though. Well, thirty feet. You could. Oh, you'll I can be follow, able to follow the, the trail. Yeah, I'll you'll follow, follow the that thing. trough. Um, and as you, so you pop your detect magic and you see this trail, um, in the in the ground, and as you come towards it, you see that there's a, it looks like a 
almost like a like a back room like a like a like a dry storage closet for a restaurant and the door is locked but that is where you can feel it through the wood on this door that there is that that is the the source point i kick in the door okay yeah bam Uh, i'm not even gonna make you roll for that because you're ronin um and inside you see a small magic circle uh give me arcana checks i was about to say it'd be actually kind of funny if you used robbie as a battering ram (laughs) (laughs) he's got his fit he's got his arm out we could wreck on that i'll allow it i will give Uh, somebody inspiration i'll Oh, Rachel, do you have inspiration already? I do not. Okay, get get some inspiration because that's amazing. Uh, twenty two on my Arcana check as well. I got a twelve, which is pretty good for me. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Robbie's like magic. Or, not Robbie. Rodin. Rodin's like. Uh, Robbie's like. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> Dial up tones. Uh, there's this horrific screeching coming from uh, Robbie. No. Um, uh, it's so just this, weird. Thalia, you're seeing uh, this circle looks like it's not to summon things. It is a it is a focus. It is channeling the magic in the area and putting it in one spot. It is channeling it towards that point. Um, and with a twenty two, it looks like if if Bartholomew was correct, eight of these would basically. Depending on where it was going, you could probably get most places in the, in the plains. Um, are there any signs of people, bodies? Nope. It's it's a small like there's just enough room for the circle, and that's kind of it. Okay, I'm going to locate object on oh. the. I'm going to locate object on the Brotherhood member card. Uh, okay. My boss. Look at objects a thousand feet. Yeah. Okay. It's not in this room. But there is, you're getting a ping about 500 feet towards the mayor's estate. You're getting something there. You, that card is over that way somewhere. I take off running towards that. Okay. I follow carrying Robbie. (laughs) Uh, Can I bend him into a more easily (laughs) carryable shape? Or his limbs just like... Um, I feel like... He shut down. (laughs) He shut down. Uh, Robbie, do your limbs lock when you go into shutdown? No, I actually kind of figured I would have because no energy is being you're just uh, ragdolling yeah okay so yeah he's ragdolled he is over perfect your shoulders like a, so like i'm gonna a, throw like him he's gonna be a sack of bolts and i'm gonna go off running after thalia Start trekking. okay um thalia you you follow this and you come to surprise of all surprises manhole cover and nobody was surprised <laughs> <laughs> nope. It's about to get poopy. But just gonna, you're gonna look over. Ronan? Can I take off the manhole cover? Yep. Easy, easy peasy. Yeah, you can reach down, pop it up with one hand, and how down far below, away can I throw the manhole cover? With one hand? Yes. <laughs> Give me a strength I wanna, check. I wanna frisbee this thing. You want a discus? Yeah. Uh strength check. Plus five, so seventeen. Cool. So you turn and you just huck this thing and it spirals its way in and actually lands in the crater. <laughs> um, just <laughs> <laughs> it just <laughs> slides across. It actually, it does that thing that coins do when they like kind of roll around the outside for a little bit. It just like spirals in and then eventually stops, not at the center and misses everybody. Uh, but everyone in the crater just sees this manhole cover just kind of sliding around until it falls over. Um, straight down beneath you, Thalia, where the locate object is, is a pile of Brotherhood robes and accoutrements. And also a couple of other just clothing 
for him to walk in. It's just grown kind of haphazard down there. Okay. I'm going to collect what I can. Okay. And let's see. I'm going to message. I'm going to sending. I'm going to send somebody. I got to think about it. Okay. Um, so Ronan, you're seeing underneath where you lifted up this manhole cover is a pile of discarded clothing and wallets, coin purses. Um, and Thalia's face drops into this very serious, somber face. And she just very resolutely climbs her way down and starts collecting what she can. Can I make it down with Robbie? You're there. It's it's cozy. This is not. This was not a main thoroughfare sewer lane. This is a dump spot. Um, you could fit Sans Robbie without too much trouble. Um, I'm actually gonna stop him from, from coming down. I'm gonna. Okay. I'm gonna Ron, Ron, can you can you stay up there, please? Sure. I'm gonna sit Robbie down, like, kind of like he's he's like propped up, and then I'm gonna sit down in front of him. And I'm just gonna like poke his face back and forth, okay. make his head go plunk, clunk, clunk. I'm plunk. gonna I'm gonna sending a tronics. Okay. And say, explosion sight neutralized. Um. Um. Mechanis involved. Um, located belongings from kidnapped Brotherhood members. Um, I'll give off my location and wait for a reply. Okay. You get a response back neutralized interesting we'll be right there five minutes and you should be gone Lami that's me it's you uh kneeling in the center of practically the most divine site you could find on this plane. Uh, congratulations, you made a mecca. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> what are you... What are you asking her about? I don't know yet. I got some thinking to do. Okay, so you're, you're just kind of bearing your soul to, to her. Yep. Okay. Ladies love that. They do. When you say, hey, we need uh, to talk, but I don't know about what. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you feel her... You feel a pair of hands settle on your shoulders. And they're not blue like hers. Who's got the hands on my, my, my what, 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 what? They, they look very familiar. And there's a ring on her left hand. And the skin matches yours. I'm terrified. They're your mother's hands. I'm fucking terrified. And you hear, you hear her say, I'm proud of you. Wasn't ready for this. <laughs> and then the hands lift off. And you're back to sort of your meditating. Fuck. <laughs> Great, we'll let you sit on that one for a couple of weeks. Good uh, idea. <laughs> anybody else have something they want to do? Because I'm making my way through the circle. Um, Robbie, are you going to power up anytime soon? Or are you staying shut down until somebody wakes you up? 
No, I think it's appropriate I stay shut down till somebody... How the fuck do we wake what? you up? I've been poking you in the face. That was traumatic. <laughs> you gotta push the button like, like R2-D2. You gotta put the thing in and spin it. Ah, uh, yes. <laughs> spin the thing. Um... Thalia, after a couple of minutes of you collecting the belongings, you get um, you get a local sending um, from Atronix. So, and it goes, well, the guards are on your side. Don't know what the mayor told them, but you're off Corvor's most wanted. Congratulations. There may be some awkward questions about two explosions in the same space. And frankly, I'm just as interested in finding out what happened as you are. So am I. <laughs> Can I reply? Yes. Uh, and does this one have more? Oh, it's message. This so is this is this is this is message. message. This is okay. this is the local ping. Cool. Great. Uh, we're on Wi-Fi. Great. Um, yeah. <laughs> you're on the local network. <laughs> um, say, oh. I'll, I'll found we found I found everyone's belongings, but there's no sign of them. They're all I don't know. Definitely need to talk. It got pretty heavy, pretty wild. Um. I have theories. I'm happy to answer questions. Heading yeah. to the mayor's mansion. No, no, well, we're almost to you. At this point, we'll just make this an official polite questioning. Okay. I'll climb out of the sewer once I've got okay. everything kind of collected. Yeah, you have, you have identification for all 17 members. Um, their IDs, any personal accoutrements, um, and a couple of smaller identification items for uh, other people that had been down there. Uh, As you come out of the sewer, you just see Ronan holding Robbie's arms going, spank, bank, 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 bank. <laughs> One of those banks, <laughs> Robbie, in sitting there kind of quietly, for the first time really your first time to yourself and really internally just focused on you no external stimulus just you chilling out your own version of meditating you you're sitting in blackness and at as you kind of look down you see a point of light sitting in your chest and you have two smaller points in your hands and as you're kind of holding your hands in front of your face and looking at it it feels like what all the organics called a dream and you're feeling this this strange sense of slow motion movement and then off in the distance there's another light that matches yours. Is it Robbie's mom? <laughs> what do you do? You have full movement. You are just currently sitting in this position in the dark. I will stand up and walk towards. Okay. And in the weird way dreams do your environment doesn't change but suddenly you are at the light and the light is just a single sphere sitting in front of you what do you do have I expired I certainly hope not you hear a very familiar voice I certainly hope not that would be most uncomfortable for the rest of the species on this plane. How are you contacting me? 
It's Terry. I do not know. How are you contacting me? Well, you reached out to me. <laughs> like, you called. What do you want? <laughs> can I... Can I help you? I have touched a large amount of Mechanus energy. I believe I am still off. Interesting. This will require additional study. I have something to bring you. What would that be? I believe it is a corrupted Modron. And the light kind of pushes towards you and almost like similar to how the shadow stepped out of the darkness, out of this ball of light, Terry floats forward. And now the two of you are having this weird dream conversation. And he goes, oh, interesting. Why do you need to bring it to me? It must remain in quarantine. The reasons, as discussed when we last visited. Okay. Well. Unfortunately, the planar entrances here are mid-move. I have no current functioning gates at the moment. Haste would be recommended. Please try to contact me again when a gate is established. We will find it. As you wish, speaker. And there's this... Holy! Oh, sorry. Go ahead. Can you turn me on, please? And he's like, and y- the arm reaches out and touches the the Primus symbol on the back of your hand, and you and like snap back into your body, and you're now awake. Bink bonk, bink bonk, bink. Bonk. Hello. Oh. Hi. I'm Robbie. Well, that's good. It would be awkward if you weren't. Ronan. Hmm. I believe I touched God. Well, how? <laughs> and I just hold up my hands. <laughs> I'm gonna kind of do one of these and like poke each one of them and I'm like they, they feel like your hands um, I don't know. but if if you believe you touched God I believe you and I slap him on the shoulder uh which shoulder his left the one the one that so which which side of the duster the black or the uh the white I'm gonna go with the black side okay <laughs> the normal looking side pet pet <laughs> uh Okay. Uh, Thalia, I'm pretty sure you heard all of that conversation. I was, about to say, did I, I was just about to ask. You, you have heard that entire conversation as Robbie has been slapped into awakenness. Are, are you okay, Robbie? I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I just... You... May, you were close to exploding, and I'm really sorry. I try not to use magic on other people. I'm really sorry. You did. Exactly as I asked. Things went terribly wrong. You're welcome. <laughs> Speaking of not using magic on other people, Robbie, we have to have a talk. You've been using magic on people and casting friends on on random people, and it's not very nice. I kind of put my hands on my hips, but like a little too high of my hips to kind of like puff up a little bit. Uh, I do not rude. understand. Gino always said, leave your clients with a smile. Who's Gino? I, 
my friend. According to the mayor, when they found me, he was found deceased nearby. Hmm. Right. That is unfortunate. We should look into that. Should leave with a smile on their face. Yes, but, but it should like, be a natural smile, not like a forced a smile. Or some and, shit. And like, it only lasts for a minute. And and look, I'm I'm all for entertaining people and making people happy and I really only use magic on other people when it's like an emergency, like you were about to blow up. But if you <laughs> sorry. Um, but when you use friends like that, you're not you're not making a lot of friends like you've been kicked out of like two places now. Because they're not your friends anymore. And But they may still be trade partners. I'm not so sure about that. Robbie, do you have anything in your databases about social etiquette? Only what Gino taught me. Everything else was created for the war. I'm going to look at, over at Thali and go, do you have a book on that? We'll, we'll keep talking. I can, I can update your databank since they're not currently up to date. That sounds most agreeable. I'm gonna stand up and put out a hand to help up Robbie. And then I just, without taking it, kind of do that stand up like the, the battle droids <laughs> just. <laughs> I kind of look at my hand and be like, yeah. Because you're, you're I still. Uh, Ronan, you're still, you're still covered in ash and also flickery. Uh, <laughs> Is there anything different about Robbie? Folly is a little wary. Um, I can do not, this. not, not really. Aside from the the coat, um, and the fact that he's a little shinier on one side, um, but that seems to be wearing off. Um, He's he's still his his uh, unless Robbie himself has any has any input on that. Uh, I feel like there's not really a significant change. Um, <laughs> typical plucky, very literal robot self. Um, nope. Un unless you tell me something got re. I kind of kind of feel the same. No, nothing, nothing, nothing rearranged. Um, so as uh, you know, the 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 three of you make your way back. Um, Lamy is still, I believe, still meditating. Oh yeah, yep. Yeah, it's going to take a while. Still, still having a having a think, having a kneeling think in over the sacred crack in the ground. Um, Thrall and Mori, what are y'all doing? I am running around extremely confused. I'm checking out the manhole cover and I have like a note. <laughs> I'm trying to like figure out where it came from. <laughs> trying to reverse the trajectory and like calculate where it landed. Like, you guys come back to like a small hole where the crack is because I'm we're trying to collect the good. <laughs> trying to collect the the dirt. Um, Thrall, what are you? What are you up to? Uh, I don't know. I'm just kind of chilling. Okay, just kind of, kind of chilling, watching the the watching, watching the kerfuffle. Everything that's going on. Yes. Mm. Okay, and uh, Keelik is dead in his usual place near you. Um, just kind of standing there watching everything that's happened, and he's just he, the two of you are just standing quietly at the edge of this circle um, and as the guards arrive led by Atronix, Bartholomew and a group of about 20 shields of the saint um, coming to see what the hell just happened you're seeing the, the familiar 
Um, actually, those of you who snuck through the alleys are seeing these for the first time. You're seeing what looks like well-armed and well-armored walkers. There's, it's a suit of armor similar to the the, um, the prisoner transport that you guys smashed, but it's that bigger. There, You see someone inside this suit, kind of like an exo, an armored exosuit. And there's a couple of those walking around with the group in addition to the guards and the shields of the saint. And um, they're, they're starting to move in and fan out. And as Bartholomew walks towards the circle, he steps into the ring of that crater and his he stops dead as he's feeling just the amount of juice that was dumped into this place. And he's standing there and he pulls out his sword and goes to one knee with the sword. Um, and Thrall, you and Keela can see that he is weeping openly. He is just, he's overwhelmed and he's just crying. Um, and the other shields move in and form a line behind him following the curve of this crater and are all kneeling and saying a prayer. And Atronix is like and he walks in and like he does something very similar but he doesn't he does the opposite he does not pray he starts kind of cursing under his breath and he's like there's no there's no fucking way in all the hells that this is happening there's like he he's starting to go into that tizzy that maury and ed have gone into where they're trying to run the numbers of the the religious fallout from this event and what the hell it means and what the hell just happened with the evidence that he's got in front of him and he looking rather undignified in his wizard robes books it towards the center where Lamy is uh and as he gets closer he stops and he starts like feeling his way around and pulls out a notepad and starts taking notes and as the guards come in and start to cordon off the area uh that is where I think we will leave for, for today. So lovely game, a lot of exciting shit. We went from super emotional to super stressed out, super duper quickly, which was awesome. And I love it. What a wave. What a, what a, what a wave. <laughs> yeah, Robbie, Robbie basically tapped into the, uh, you were you were seconds from death, buddy. Uh, <laughs> you you were almost obliterated by the fact that you you were draining the the pool that your god gets its power from, and it was almost a terrible time. That sounds like a great time. Uh, <laughs> but we've we've we learned a couple of things. Uh, yeah, awesome, awesome game. Very excited. And uh, yeah, till next week, internet. See you on the next one. Bye.